Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in analytical geometry. Um, I hope you've had a good week so far and that you've been enjoying the week and that it has treated you well. Um, and I hope you remember that what we were doing last week. So last week we were talking, well the last lesson, we were talking about determining the acute angle between the line passing through points P minus two a half and Q zero two. And I left this year because what we said was that and the lines pointing through. So we said, OK, fine. We've got this is X is minus 2, Y is a half, and X is 0 and 2. So this line here would be the PQ line. OK, right? And the green line over here is obviously the AD line, the AD line. And they wanted to know what is the acute angle between the two line passing through these points. And if you recall, I said to you that the way we can do this is we can find, if we found the red angle, the angle that the red line, PQ line was making with the X axis, and we found the angle that the green line was making with the x-axis, then using the angle sum of triangles, we can find out what the blue angle is, okay? So that's what we're going to do. And so far, we've worked out that this angle here is 71.57 degrees. So now we're going to do exactly the same thing, but we're going to do it for the green. So we first have to work out our gradient. And it obviously is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it really doesn't matter again. So in this time, I'm going to call this point 2 and this point 1. Just to show you, it can be in either order. So it's going to be y2, which is 0, minus 6 over x2, which is 1, minus minus 2, which becomes minus 6 over 1 plus 2, which is minus 6 over 3, which is minus Two. Okay, so now we know the gradient m is minus 2. So now remember we need to find tan theta is equal to negative 2. And remember what I said to you guys, I said the better thing to do is just to find the gradient as a 2 and then find out that angle because negative 2 is going to give me that angle there and I actually want the inside angle. Watch, I'll show you. So we're going to go tan of negative 1 of 2. Okay, so let's do that. So if we go, um, and just hang a second, I just to close this so it's not in my way. Properties, auto hide, apply. There we go, it's a bit better. Okay, right now, oh, idiot. There we go. So now if we do this, he's much better now, you can actually see things. So we're gonna go shift tan of two, close bracket equals. That gives me 63.43 degrees, okay, 63. So if I'd done shift tan of negative two, it would have given me the external angle, the obtuse angle, which is fine. I could have subtracted it from 180 degrees, or you can just do shift tan, and you get the angle that is the acute angle that, that made the line makes with the x-axis, which is 63.43. So that means that this angle here is 63,43 degrees. So do you agree then that the blue angle is pretty easy to get? We can go 180 minus 71,57 plus 63,43 degrees because of the fact that these three angles, the red, the green, and the blue, have to add up to 180, and they're asking us to find the blue angle. Well, they're asking us to find the acute angle. So let's have a look at that. So we're gonna go 63 point, and I'm gonna do it as I've written it. So I'm gonna say 180 minus bracket, 71.57 plus 63.43, close bracket equals, and it's 45 degrees, ta-da! So the acute angle between these two is 45 degrees. Nice and easy and pretty. Okay, so you see that wasn't too difficult. So usually, when we ask to find the angle between two lines, we have to find their angles with respect to the x-axis and then work out a triangle. Okay, so now we've got again, determine the angle between the line y plus x equals three and the line x plus y equals two. And I am gonna go through it again. I know it's a different example, but I'm going to go through it and you'll see why. Okay, so first of all, let's make um, this y the subject of the formula. So you've got y is equal to minus x plus three. Okay, y is equal to minus x plus three. 
So do you agree it goes through positive three and it is a negative gradient, so it's going to go through positive three there. Another way of doing it is going, well, if x is naught, what is y? And y is going to be three. If x is y is naught, what is x? It's going to be three and we can join the dots. Okay. And I apologize for the fact that I don't have a ruler facility on this. And we've got x is equal to y plus 2. Therefore, do you agree that this is, could be written as y is equal to x plus 2? So therefore, it's crossing a 2, but do you agree this is a positive gradient of plus 1? And therefore, this is going to be minus 2, and there it's going to be. Now, guys, this one is much easier, okay, because I'll tell you why. We know that perpendicular lines, what do we know? Then we know that m1 times by m2 has to equal to minus 1. In this case, what is the gradient of the blue line? The gradient of the blue line is what? It is minus 1. And the gradient of the red line is 1. So what do we end up with? We end up with minus 1. So what is the angle between these two? It is 90 degrees. 90 degrees. You are quite welcome to have worked out the tan theta is equal to 1, therefore theta is equal to tan negative 1 of 1, which is 45 degrees. Then we would have found that this angle here is 45 degrees, and you would have found that angle there is 45 degrees, and then you would have realized that that was 90 degrees. Okay, so there you go. That's quite a nice, easy-ish question. Do you agree? Right, now we get on to proper exam questions. And what I've done is I've actually chosen quite a few exam questions because the complicated thing with analytical geometry is when they bring the question all together like this and then they expect you to remember everything you've done and it builds on. So in other words, the answer you use here, yeah, you've determined here, yeah, needs to be used there or there or there, whatever, okay? So that's why I'm doing this and you'll also see that there's quite some nice, interesting questions here. So let's go through it. And guys, please, you need to remember to read the blurb, read the blurb. Okay, so A is minus five minus three. B is 7, 2, C is 3, 9. There are vertices on the triangle ABC in the Cartesian plane. BN is perpendicular to CA, okay? And M is the midpoint. M is the midpoint. Oh, M is the midpoint. I'm just going to put that there so you can see it, okay? Now, what they do is they say, calculate the perimeter of a triangle ABC. They want to know the perimeter of ABC. So perimeter means length. Do you agree? It means length. We want to know how long do all three, all three of these sides. So what are we going to do? We are going to find the length of AB and we're going to add it to the length of BC and we're going to add it to the length of AC. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so let us do that. So remember that the to do the length, we need the distance formula. And guys, all these formula are on your formula sheet. So you guys shouldn't have to memorize it. And But the most important thing you guys need to be doing, and I'm serious about this, is you need to have your formula sheets next to you when you're working so that you can get used to using your formula sheets as a tool for you to carry on working. Now, just for the record, it doesn't matter if this is y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared or the other way around. It's exactly the same thing. It's going to work out the same answer. Okay, so let's, I'm just going to work at the top here because I'm on the roll. So let's do the length of AB. The length of AB is using these two points. Do you agree? So we've got the square root. And I'm going to call A.1 and B.2. And the most important thing here is to substitute these numbers incorrectly, okay? So the length of AB is equal to, okay? We want X2 minus X1. So it's going to be 7 minus minus 5, all squared, plus Y2, which is 2 minus minus 3, all squared, which is the square root of 7 plus 5, all squared, plus 2 plus 3 is 5 squared. 
7 plus 5 is 12. So that becomes the square root of 144 plus 25, which equals the square root of 169, which is 13. Yay, so that's a nice number, 13. Okay, now we need the length of BC. So I'm going to change color so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm doing the length of BC. So this is still 0.2, so I'm going to call this 0.1 now just for this length, BC, okay? So we're doing BC. It's going to be the square root of x2, which is 7 minus 3, all squared, plus y2, which is 2 minus 9, all squared, which is the square root of 7 minus 3 is 4 squared plus 2 minus 9 is minus 7 all squared. Which is the square root of 16 plus 49, which is equal to the square root of 9 and 6 is 15, carry 1, 4 and 1 is 5, 65. So that's square root 65. Okay, let's just leave that there for a minute. Actually, let's use our calculator and see what square root 65 is. So we can go square root of 65 equals, yeah, that's going to help. Okay, they've said leave the answer in cert form, so we're going to leave it as root 65. I thought it might be like 2 root 60 or something stupid. Okay, right, so let us now do the final one, which is CA, and in this case, I'm going to go back to this being a 2.2. Okay, so now we've got AC equals the square root of 0.2, which is going to be minus 3 minus 3. Oh, I see. I messed up. You've got to be careful your x and y's. Okay, so I'm doing x's first. Okay, so let me just fix this. X is first. Okay, so I'm doing minus 5 minus 3 all squared plus minus 3 minus 9 all squared, which equals the square root of minus 5 minus 3 is... What's minus 5 minus 3? Minus 5 minus 3 is minus... 8 all squared, which is 64, plus minus 3 minus 9 is minus 12, all squared is 144, which is the square root of 4 and 4 is 8, and 6 and 4 is 10, carry one 208. Right, and then they said we must leave our answer in third form. So I'm actually going to put this on a calculator, and what happened to my calculator? Oh, that sucks. Oh, it does this every now and again. Okay, so I'm going to put it into my physical calculator. Okay, and we've got the square root, we've got 13 plus the square root of 65 plus the, mm -mm. okay, plus the square root of, 208 and that equals oh uh, you see it works out to a horrible number so we actually gonna have to it says leave your answer in cert form so what we're gonna have to do is we can either say this is 13 or you know what we could do it would be better okay we've got square root of 169 plus square root of 65 plus square root of 208 do you agree that that let me just check it I'm just checking something quickly. I just want to show you. Um, no. Okay, so unfortunately, you either have to write this as 13 plus the square root of 65 plus the square root of 208. That's it. That's all we can do. Um, we yeah, that's all you can do. There is a way of doing this where you actually do prime factorization, but I really don't think that they expect you to do prime factorization in the grade 11 exam paper. Um, okay, so let's carry on. 
Okay, so that was that question. Um, let's move on. So let's do red. Now it says calculate the gradient of AC. So they want the gradient of AC. Now remember what is the gradient? The gradient is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so basically what we need to do is we need to again sign points. I'm going to be using the this we know that this is point two and this is point one so we're going to say okay well y2 is minus three minus nine over minus five minus three which is going to be minus 12 over minus eight and then the minuses cancel and 12 divided by 8 if you divide both of these by 4 is 3 over 2. So the gradient of M of AC M is 3 over 2. Now it says hence calculate the equation, determine the equation for BN. Now you'll notice that BN is perpendicular to AC. Okay, it's perpendicular. So what do we know about that? We know therefore that the gradients of perpendicular lines M1 multiplied by M2 has to equal to minus 1, right? So the gradient of AC is 3 over 2. So we know that 3 over 2 times by M2 has to equal to minus 1. So what do we do? We divide both sides by 3 over 2. So you go M2 is equal to minus 1 divided by 3 over 2. But when we divide, what do we do? We tip and time. So it equals minus 1 times by 2 over 3, which is negative 2 over 3. So the gradient of this is minus 2 over 3. That's the gradient of this, okay? Now we need to find a point because our equation is y is equal to mx plus c. So we've got m, now we need to work out c. And the only way we can work out c is if we're substituting the point 7, 2. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go 2 is equal to 7 times by minus 2 over 3 plus c. So 2 is equal to minus 14 over 3 plus c. So C is going to be equal to what? It's going to be 2 plus 14 over 3. Remember that this is an over 1. So if I bring it all over 3, it's 6 plus 14 all over 3, which is 20 over 3, which is what? It's 6 and 2 thirds. So therefore, my equation is going to be Y is equal to minus 2 over 3X plus six and two thirds. And grade 11s, I keep reiterating this, you really, really need to check that what you are doing, it makes sense. So first of all, you've got a negative gradient and that makes sense but because this graph is going up to the left, okay? Then you find that where it cuts the y-axis is six and two thirds. Now let's just think about it. That means it's that point there is about six and two thirds. This point up here has got a y value of nine and that point down there is two. So yes, it looks like that could be around six. So yes, it makes like, looks like it could make sense. Okay, so therefore we call it that. Now, I just want to erase this to get it out of the way. Okay, remember grade 11 that if you miss something, you're welcome to go and watch a recording of it. Okay, afterwards, and you can always then blitz through the bits that you kind of know exactly and how to do it, and then watch the stuff that you struggle with over and over again if you need to. Okay, now it says calculate the area of triangle ABC, ABC, ABC. Okay, so I want the area of this triangle. If N is the point 1, 6. C, so we were right because that if that's six over there, then that has to be six and a bit. Okay, right, so never mind. So N is the point one six and it says calculate the area of ABC. Now let's think about that. In order to work out the area, we need area is equal to half the base times the height. So since this is perpendicular to AC, do you agree we can consider AC to be the base length? And we know how long AC is. AC, AC is square root 208. That is the square root of 208. Okay. We also know the height. We can get the height because we can get the length of NB. So we can say that 
NB is equal to, now we're going to do the distance formula again. So we're going to call this point 0.1 and that's still point 0.2. So it's going to be 7 minus 1 all squared plus 6, oh, wrong again. Oh, you have to be so careful, especially if you're tired. Okay, right, so we were green. Um, 2 minus 6 all squared. Okay, so then it becomes square root. 7 minus 1 is 6, 6 squared is 36. Plus 2 minus 6 is minus 4. Minus 4 squared is 16. So then you've got 6 and 6 is 12. Carry 1. 3 and 1 is 4. That's 52. So that's square root 52. So do you agree that the area now is going to be the area? Is a half. Multiply the square root of the base, which is square root 208. Multiply it by the square root of the perpendicular, which is square root 52. And then all you do is pop this in your calculator. You go 0.5 times the square root of 208 times the square root of 52 equals, and the answer is 52. Yay! But please note, you always have to give the units. You go 52 units squared, units squared. So even if they don't tell you the units, you have to always tell them that it's 52 units squared. Okay, now they've said they want us to work out this angle here, this angle theta. Okay, so this is kind of tricky, but it's not that tricky. Do you agree we've already worked out this gradient here? We know that this gradient, the gradient I'm pointing to is the gradient of AC. We worked out the gradient of AC was 3 over 2. So M is equal to 3 over 2. Right, do you agree? Do you agree that... I could actually look at this triangle here. Let me show you. Um, I could actually look at this triangle here. Okay. So if I got this angle from that there, okay, and I got hmm, this angle here from this line here, do you agree that that angle equals that angle, right? Therefore, I would be able to work out this angle because of the fact that the exterior angle equals the sum of the two interior opposite angles. So I can get this angle and I can get that angle and that will give me theta. I can work that out. Okay, so that's what we're going to do and that's one of the reasons why I chose this question because of the fact that we needed to do this type of question. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is change, manipulate, and I'm just erasing so I've got space to write. I would erase everything, but I actually want some of the information, so let's just go back for it. Very frustrating that I can't erase in blocks with this program. I must write to them and talk to them about it. Okay, right, so now what are we doing? We first need to find that angle there. So we know that tan theta is equal to 3 over 2. Therefore, theta is going to be arc tan of 3 over 2. So we pop that in our calculator. We go shift tan of 3 over divided by 2 close brackets, equals, and it works out to be 56.31. So this works out to be 56,31 degrees, okay? 56,31. Um, okay, so that there is 56.31. Now we need to get this little purple angle. So in order to get the purple angle, we need the gradient of AB, which we haven't actually worked out before. No, we haven't. So now we need to work it out. So we're going to say, I wonder why they told us M is the midpoint of AC. We haven't used it at all. I don't know, it's weird. Anyway, let's carry on. 
A, okay, so we've got AB, right? So we want to find the gradient of AB. So we're going to say again that this is 1 and this is 2. So therefore we've got Y2 is going to be 2 minus minus 3 over X2 is 7 minus minus 5. 2 plus 3 is 5 over 7 plus 5 is 12. So now we've got tan theta is equal to 5 over 12. Therefore, theta is equal to tan to the negative 1 of 5 over 12. So we do shift tan 5 divided by 12, close brackets, equals, and it works out to be 22.62 degrees. So this angle here, 22,62 degrees, which looks like that, okay? Do you agree, therefore, that these angles are vertically opposite? So that angle there is 22,62 degrees. Now we're going to use the theorem that states that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the interior two opposite angles. In other words, we're going to say that that red angle, uh, 56,31 degrees, equals theta plus the purple angle of 22,62 degrees, okay? Therefore, theta is 56,31 minus 22,62 degrees. And what do we do? We go 56.31 minus 22.62 is equal to, and we have to press the SD button, 33,69. 33,69 degrees is your theta. Okay, there we go. So now you know what the angles are. Okay, so that's how you'd work out and it says to one decimal place. So you always go back and check your question. It says to one decimal place and what is wrong with my answer? It's to two decimal places. So I need to round that off and it becomes 33,7 degrees is theta and don't forget your degree sign. Right, moving on. Okay, so that was a very nice question. Um, Okay. Uh, A, B, C, D. Okay, so it says A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral with vertices A minus 3 naught, B is minus 1, 3, C is 2 minus 1, and D is. And D is. Um, sorry, I got to chat. D02. Okay, now it says determine the coordinates of M, the midpoint of AC. In other words, if I had to draw a line along here and find M, I want to find the midpoints of AC. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to find the midpoint. And midpoint, do it on the formula sheet. You just need to recognize it as Y2. Mm -mm. No, it's not. It is. x2 plus x1 over 2 semicolon y2 plus y1 over 2. All that you're doing is finding the average between the two points. So in this case we're trying to find for AC so it's going to be minus 3 plus 2 over 2 and then it's going to be 0 plus minus 1 over 2. So the midpoint is Minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1, so it's minus a half, the x value is minus a half, and the y value is minus a half as well. So that there, the midpoint, is at minus a half, minus a half, and admittedly it doesn't quite look like that, but then my drawing's a little bit bad. Okay, so now we've done that. Now it says show that AC and BD bisect each other. AC and BD bisect each other. <sighs> okay, right, so let me just do something here. Let's just erase this and let's just join these lines. So AC and BD, so we need to go AC and BD. So do we agree that the midpoint of AC, M, was at minus a half, minus a half? Do you agree that if the midpoint of BD is also minus a half, minus a half, then we're sorted? 
Okay, then we have definitely got that they are bisecting each other because they're crossing at the same point. Okay, so let's do that. So now we're going to find the midpoint of BD. So we use purple, the midpoint of BD, which is equal to, it's going to be again, naught plus minus one over two, and then two plus minus three over two, Okay, so minus 1 over 2 is minus 1 over 2. 2 plus minus 3 is minus 1 over 2. Ta-da! So therefore, we can say, yay, this is the midpoint of both X and, I mean, both AC and BD, and therefore, they bisected 90 degrees. Now it says, prove that angle ADC is 90 degrees. So how are we going to do that? In order to prove it's 90 degrees, we need to find the gradient of AD and we need to find the gradient of DC and then prove that they are negative inverses of each other. Okay, right. So let us do that. Um, just a second. Okay, right. So let's first find the gradient of AC, M, I mean AD, AD equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to randomly call this point 2 and this point 1. So that becomes 2 minus 0 over 0 minus minus 3, which is 2 over 3. Okay, so that is the gradient of AD. Now we're going to do the gradient of DC, M of DC, which is going to again be 2 minus minus 1 all over naught minus 2. 2 minus minus 1 is 2 plus 1, which is 3, over naught minus 2 is negative 2. Okay, so we can see already that they are definitely 90 degrees, but you have to prove it. Okay, so in order to prove it, you have to say, well, M of AD multiplied by M of DC is equal to 2 over 3 times by minus 3 over 2. Cancel, 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 which equals minus 1. Therefore, they are perpendicular to each other, and this is a 90 degree angle. Okay. Phew. Okay, so now we've proven that ADC is 90 degrees. Okay, so that's wonderful. Now they say prove that ABCD is a square. Okay, so do you agree that if we look thinking our quadrilaterals, okay, angles with 90 degrees are what? We've already got the, the diagonals bisect each other, that's great. For 90 degree things, we're looking at rectangles and squares, and that's about it, okay? So the only thing that we need to do now is prove two of these sides are equal in length. If we prove that two of these sides are equal in length, and we know that that angle is 90 degrees, then we know that this is a square. Okay, so again, I'm just for fun going to use the same lines. I'm going to use AD and I'm going to use DC, but I am going to change color so you can see what I'm doing. So we'll use blue. So let's find the length of AD. So that would be the distance of AD is going to be the square root of, so it's going to be two, right? So it's going to be naught minus minus three, let me not write there. Let's write, okay, we've done this, we know how to do it now. Okay, let's do it. We're gonna go AD, the length of AD is equal to the square root of naught minus minus three squared plus two minus naught squared, okay? So minus times the minus is a plus, so it's three squared plus two squared, which is the square root of nine plus four, which is the square root of 13. Okay, so this is square root 13, do you agree? Now let's find the length of DC. So the length of DC, and I'm just going to erase this one as well. The length of DC is going to be what? And I'm going to again call this point 2 and this point 1. Okay, so we're going to say DC is equal to the square root of 
So it's y2, which is 2 minus minus 1 squared plus 0 minus 2 all squared, which is 2 plus 1 is 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is 9 plus 8. Hmm. Did I make a mistake? Let's see if I made a mistake. Let's do AD again, and then we'll go back to, let's do AD again. Sorry guys, let's see if I can make a mistake. Okay, so AD is equal to the square root of two, uh, I did make a mistake, two minus naught squared plus naught minus three squared, I did, sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. So this becomes the square root of two minus naught is four squared plus three squared, which is the square root of eight plus nine, which is the square root of 17. No, I'm, oh my hat, I'm so sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, okay. I'm laughing because I'm so frustrated with myself. Sorry. 4 squared is 16. No, but that is 4. Okay. 4 plus 3 squared is 4 plus 9, which is the square root of 13. So that is right. That is the square root of 13. I'm not mad. Okay. That is the square root of 13. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 plus 9 is 13. Okay, right. That's cool. Now let's do this DC and I'm going to do it on this side. So it says that DC is equal to the square root of, so we're on Y, so it becomes 2 minus minus 1 squared plus 0 minus 2 all squared, which becomes 3 squared plus 2 squared square rooted, which is the square root of 13. It does work. Yay, so we've just proven it. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so there we go. Show that ABCD is a square. It is. Now it says, determine the size of theta, the angle of inclination is easy, correct to one decimal place. Okay, guys, remember, if you have seen angle of inclination, what formula are you thinking of? What formula? You should be thinking that tan theta is equal to m, where m is your gradient. It is on your formula sheet, okay? And they want theta. So in order to get theta, what do we need to work out? We need to work out m, the gradient. We need to work out the gradient m. So if we do that, we need the gradient of CD, which we've already worked out. There it is. Woohoo! It's the gradient is minus 3 over 2. So we know that tan theta is equal to minus 3 over 2. And you'll see we want the outside angle, the obtuse angle. So therefore, we can just put this straight into our calculator. Theta is equal to tan negative 1 of minus 3 over 2. And what do you get? You get shift, you get shift tan of negative of negative 3 over 2 equals and it becomes 123 degrees comma 6 9. 123,69 degrees. And again, they've said correct to one decimal place. So now you need to fix that. So it becomes 123,7 degrees. Awesome. Now, last question. It says, does C lie inside or outside of the circle with the center of O and with the radius of 2, with the radius of 2. Okay, so for that, we can actually erase all the ink. Okay, and what are they saying? They're saying, does C lie inside or outside of a circle, center O with a radius of 2? So what do they really want to know? They want to know how far this is. If this is bigger than 2, then C lies outside the circle. If this is smaller than 2, then it lies inside the circle. Okay, and this is justify your answer. Okay, so I'm going to tell you right now that it lies outside the circle. 
Okay, it lies out the side, so I guarantee it. I haven't worked it out. I haven't really looked at the sum before. I'm telling you now that I do know that. How do I know that? Because if you think about it, do you agree that to get to 2, I'd have to go across, I mean get to C, I have to go across 2 and down 1. And this is my hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is always longer than either of these two sides. So therefore I know that this is greater than 2, and therefore it will lie outside any circle that has got a radius of 2. If you don't like the logic behind that, let's find the hypotenuse. So by find the hypotenuse, we're going to say OC is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 5. And if you pop that in your calculator, you go square root, you go square root of 5, and you get 2.24. 2,24. Okay, therefore we can see that C definitely lies outside a circle that has got a radius of 2. But like I said, you could have just said, well, it obviously is outside the circle because if the x value of C is 2, then the, 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 the radius, the distance from O to C will be greater than 2 because it is the hypotenuse. Okay, right, great. 11s. That's it for today. I hope you've learned something. Have a wonderful evening and I will speak to you. I'm about grade 11 maths on Monday. Have a great day. Cheers.